I do not think I'm smart enough to engage with a lot of the fitness content that's out there. I want to point out that I was a kinesiology major for two semesters of my undergrad. I'm a certified personal trainer with the NSCA, and I'm currently studying for my CASCS. And when I did take the exam, I missed the passing grade by two points. And this is just a uh, side point, but that really means you missed it by 30%. Um, just because you missed the passing mark by two points, you really missed it by, you know, however many actual questions you legitimately missed, right? So that's on me. But anyway, I think the kind of content that is being made by those who value a more science-based approach is suffering from an issue that has always been around since I started consuming fitness content. And that is a lot of talking points, attitudes, and behavior use intelligence or information to cover what is essentially bad faith argumentation. On one hand, I'm severely under under informed in the science, and I think part of that is just because I do not care. I do not think an intimate knowledge of biomechanics, physiology, neuroscience, nutrition, or chemistry is all that necessary for good fitness content and advice. Most people who search for fitness information just want something that works rather than a lecture on scientific explanations. As a personal trainer, something I try to avoid as much as possible is I only try to um, validate my points when I'm speaking with my clients if they really, really need um, that amount of information for buy-in. But generally speaking, it's really quite as simple as this helps you feel better. This helps you get stronger. This makes your muscles grow. And then, like, I try not to overcomplicate it all that much if that conversation comes up at all. People nowadays seem to be unable or unwilling to engage in an honest discussion, and they're not willing, or rather, they are perfectly complicit in w willfully deceiving their audience and misrepresenting perspectives that differ from their own. They seek to prove a conclusion that they already have rather than explore data, evidence, or reasoning to eventually go to valid conclusions. And this type of misleading behavior, this inability to stay on topic, and inability to present another person's claims without appealing to some kind of authority are just all different types of ways where people who are very intelligent approach conversations in a very bad from a position of bad faith and you can kind of tell when a person is going into a conversation in bad faith if they're committing the following things first they believe or how they carry themselves in the conversation can be characterized as they're not going to engage in the conversation in good faith and they're doing that by using fallacious logic or deliberately misleading the opposition's points and then because they are engaging in the conversation in bad faith they cannot be proven wrong and because they cannot be proven wrong they must be right i think we see this a lot in the science-based community quite honestly at least every now and then when it comes up upon my feed and I fully see the irony that I'm calling this type of behavior out without bringing up exact names, examples, and my argumentation in this current uh, video is not exactly perfect. So I would appreciate it if in the comments you would let me know if you also see this behavior in fitness content that, you, that comes up on YouTube or Instagram or wherever you get your YouTube fitness content or fitness information, I should say. And let me know if I'm actually making sense. Uh, because ultimately, the bottom line is that I do think a better approach to fitness information and fitness content really is monkey see, monkey do. Find the big strong monkeys and do what they did to become big strong monkeys. Find the monkeys who dealt with the same or similar problems that you currently have and um, if their conditions or their circumstances line up to yours at least uh, like in a majority fashion then I think just following their example is generally a good idea. Now, if you like listening to these, uh, you know, big strong monkeys or whatever, uh, make smart monkey noises by appealing to science and all of these other things, yeah, that's fine. Like, you know, whatever floats your boat makes, um, however you like to consume content information, that's entirely up to you. But at the end of the day, what's actually going to make you better is not watching a YouTube video. It's not going to be reading a book. It's not going to be getting a new certification. These are all things that can help and these are all things that can bolster your, yeah, your intelligence, the amount of information you know and things of that nature. But what's actually going to get you results is simply putting in the work. 
getting stronger in moderate to high rep ranges on basic compounds and a handful of isolations with good form over time. That's really all it comes down to for the most part. Now, there's obviously a little bit of other additional information that you can go into. Well, what about diet? It's like, <laughs> I've been kind of saying this quite a few times lately and I really do just believe it. I think that there's a lot of new diets that come and go and they become popular for X amount of time and they're becoming popular for a lot shorter amounts of time is what I'm noticing at least. And it's just all these different ways to eventually try to get people to eat more lean chicken, uh, some type of carb source and some vegetables or, and then, you know, if you want to make some adjustments, you take out the carbs, you, um, instead of chicken, you do fish or you do more uh, red meat or something of that nature. The modifications in the diet are very minimal and they just all kind of play off of like those three things. Maybe you increase the amount of vegetables to just be only vegetables. You go vegan, vegetarian or something, and but then you still have carb sources. But diet is really not all that complicated uh, when you get down to what you're actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis where you trying to justify it with all this information, with this wall of text of information that you may or may not have represented accurately I just think is such a waste of time and it and like i said this just might be the result of me not being smart enough to really give a fuck about the information that's being presented i remember when i had to take the courses that actually teach you how to read scientific studies and um how to read the data that comes out of these things I got a B plus in that class, if I remember correctly. And um, I think that was one of the higher grades in the class. So maybe I just went to a bad school. Maybe I just went to a bad program. There's a lot of different reasons why that could be the case. And there's definitely people out there who are much smarter and much better at like handling that information who I would trust to disclose that information. But even with that being the case, how relevant is that actually to me not being a jackass with my diet? It's really not all that much. How relevant is that to my training intensity in the gym? How relevant is that to my consistency with a certain program? It's very, very minimal in my opinion. I don't think having more information, being more intelligent is going to change any of that. So I don't think I'm smart enough to engage in the conversations that a lot of these science-based lifters are having, but I do think that the conversation that they are having are pretty useless and irrelevant anyway so it's not really that it affects me and yeah find big monkey do big monkey things and get bigger get stronger and have a great day <laughs>